Welcome once again. Great time to talk to our friends from Great Day TV. Patty Spitler, of course, the weekend gardener, Shannon Cagle. Thank you both for being here. That's not Stewie. What do you have no. there? <laughs> this is a monarch butterfly, and about a week and a half ago or so, a monarch caterpillar. I'm so excited <laughs> to hold him. Uh, and he's eating some milkweed. And just in a little story on, oh my gosh, hi, sweetie, on uh, monarch butterflies and, you know, are they in danger and all that. People went crazy over it. So yeah. contacted the expert. She knows more. There, there. I'm, oh, there it is. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? So and eventually, this little guy will make a chrysalis and, you know, work work its magic right. inside the chrysalis and then will come out as a monarch butterfly. <gasps> now here's what I learned for Great Day TV this coming weekend. Great. What I learned is that, and this is from a conservation expert at the Indianapolis Zoo. Okay. We have an interview with her. She is an international expert on these things. We are concerned about monarch butterflies, the kind that migrate to warmer climates in Mexico and Central America. Okay. Not all monarch butterflies do that. That's one of the that. revelations that we have this week is that not all monarch butterflies are the migratory type. The common monarch butterflies who live in the United States are not endangered. Okay. Ah. It's the migrating ones. Because the headlines have been screaming, monarchs endangered, right. monarchs endangered. Right, but they are. The ones that migrate, the migratory monarchs, are the ones who have been, quote unquote, red listed mm -hmm. as endangered by conservation groups. Beautiful. As humans, it's going to be very difficult for us as lay people to tell the difference between those two types of monarchs. Right. So the answer to the question is, do whatever you can to create and preserve monarch habitat. And so in front of us, we have two of their primary sources of food here in Indiana. This is common milkweed. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the, the big pod. seed pod Hold that, will, that, that will dry up. There and we, oh, we probably all played with those as kids. They're very poofy. This I is made a, a manger out of one one year. Right. Yeah. They're, they're fluffy. But this is another kind of common milkweed. This is called swamp milkweed. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's already creating the fluffy seeds that float along. And then we brought, Patty, we brought you some seeds. <gasps> oh, so I get that, some seeds. So that you can create a monarch habitat as well. Now I've got, let's see, hummingbirds, and I got bees, and now I'll have monarch butterflies. And I don't use pesticides anymore. I mean, we didn't used to know when we sprayed the lawn. Don't yes, do it. Don't and do it. you'll notice that a lot of municipalities have stopped mowing right. these down because they know how important they are to the habitat for all the monarchs. Uh, and it works. And there's a, there's kind of a window when this all comes together. But if you see, if you see a patch like that, I mean, and some of them are just out in the most random places. Yeah. Indeed, you'd be stunned at what you can find in there. And but I will tell you that all of these I brought from uh, schools mm -hmm. that have native gardens huh. to teach yep. the children. The large common milkweed came from a rural school, and the swamp milkweed came from the native garden in an urban Indianapolis school. So wow. you know there are programs where we are teaching children the teaching importance them. of these um, species preservation. What's methods. the timeline for the little dude or dudette down there? The dudette. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, they, they can vary from time to time, but right now is when they're in their last stages before we get into fall. Mm -hmm. So the, the female monarchs will plant their eggs on the back of these leaves, and then they'll grow into the tiniest micros microscopic versions of this guy who is busily munching away. <laughs> and then He's doing him. some work. Yes, <laughs> indeed. They, that's why it's so important that we keep these plants yeah. viable, because they eat a lot. And they're pollinators. That's and why we, pollinators. we need them. Right. Indeed. To keep the whole cycle going again. Yes. Uh, well, this has been terrific. Part of the work that you do on Great Day TV, and sometimes that you find out more and go even deeper into it like this. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Point to the people who know what's going on. This so Shannon weekend, is, our, is our lead story, uh, and it's this weekend, 10 o'clock, right here on Wish TV, Pet Pals TV at 10.30. Uh, oh, also on uh, Great Day TV yep. this weekend, Warm Glow. Remember, we had oh, a lot company. before. Yeah, She's, yeah. They've got a big sale coming up, and uh, it's a fabulous place. So Big sale coming up? All right, I'm yeah. heading to Richmond this weekend. There you That's go. right. Patty, thank you. Shannon, thank I, you. See,